Hey everybody and welcome back to SCDC ENT Presents The Age Woman and I am that lady Miss Nicole coming at you today with another episode of that Good Herb Talk where I basically discuss you know my uh, discoveries that I'm coming with learning how to apply and use medicinal herbs uh, and uh to make me feel better, to nourish my husband, and I'm also beginning to create a business. Um, so I'm in the foundational stages. <clears throat> um, I have very much like just the thing about using herbs is that you have to just use them, period. You have to use them. You literally have to use them to see what they do, to even begin to believe that herbs are, uh, that they work. People don't understand that, uh, you know, we don't have, we don't need, we shouldn't have to go to the store to buy, like a lot of medicines that we shouldn't even buy. Um, we have readily available medicinal herbs around us every day that we can utilize for our betterment for just common day illnesses and things that we need help with. Ladies, weight loss is in your backyard growing up out the ground. I'm just going to tell you just like that. Those little yellow dandelion flowers, you should dig some of those up. You should take them, but you got to dig them up real good You got because you need to get the root. You got to dig at the root. You got to pull the whole root up. You dig you some dandelion roots up out the ground, them little yellow flowers, ball them and make you some tea. You can take the top part of it and ball it. You just throw the whole thing in there once you wash it off real good. Now, you don't want no mud all over it. But you want to uh, take and ball you a couple of dandelion roots. And that will definitely help with your weight loss journey. Um, clean your liver, your bile. It's very good and nutri- in, in nutritive. Uh, very, uh, a lot of nutrient properties. Um, and like I said, that's just one thing. You know what I'm saying? Depending on the area of the country that you live. But I said dandelions because dandelions grow everywhere. They're everywhere. You know? um, so... Uh, what I have come to uh, learn about the practices of herbs, just like I say, you have to be, you just got to be ready to use them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, when you're not feeling a certain type of way, or if you're feeling a certain type of way, you just need to know, learn how to utilize the herbs. And that's my biggest thing is just understanding what I need to grab, when I need to grab it, and how to apply it, and when to use it, and what is it going to do when I use it. That's That's you know, how I'm beginning to understand the herbs that I utilize. And because I have understood that, I also understand that uh, there are many different types of medicinal herbs. Uh, they Some do the same thing, some do different things. Some you can substitute for something else. So you don't have to have a 50-piece 50, 50 collection of herbs. You can have 10, 15 basic herbs that do many different things and we'll really get the job done. You know what I'm saying? Uh, basic common things that we don't even think about in a grocery store like thyme and rosemary and basil and different things like that has medicinal properties that are already ready to be utilized for you to make yourself feel better. You know, um, especially like utilizing herbs, chamomile teas. There is a whole tea aisle at Walmart at every grocery store. You can begin to introduce medicinal herbs to yourself just through the tea aisle, grabbing chamomile, peppermint, grabbing echinacea. They, I saw some awesome um, echinacea and elderberry tea. Do you know how powerful those two things are together? Oh, you've got if you you can get some elderberry and echinacea tea together, you doing something because that is a powerful, powerful immune boosting co- combination. So. Um, like I said, there, there's many, many different types of herbs you can use. Right now, um, I'm in the process of learning how to grow medicinal herbs. Herbs are just like flowers. They're just like flowers. Um, for the, well, yeah, yeah, they're flowers. So they're not like, there's not like a garden, you know. So I've noticed that, um, like, my herbs don't like the soil. So I'm going to have to definitely switch up the soil for them. I'm going to have to go find something that's uh, a lot more uh, clayish type soil because it seems like that's what they like more. This uh, I have a lot of cocoa car uh, that I'm growing at my garden grows in. 
Um, I'm going to take them, end up taking them out, replanting them in something a little bit more heavy for them because I think that they just want to, like if I was just to dump the seed pack out on the ground and just let them go straight out the ground, I think they would be happier that way, you know, instead of the condition that I have them in. So they're struggling a little bit. They are giving me some good growth. Um, they are growing, but I want them to be happy so that they can thrive. And I know that I need to make some, uh, some changes and I do intend to do that once they get up a little bit, a little larger. I'm going to move them um, to the side. And I do apologize about the music. I'm living, you know, we live in the hood, in the in the, uh, the the redneck hood town. So everybody got the music that bump. That was a pretty decent song. That sounded real good. But um, so back to the good earth talk. So I'm growing a, diff- a total of 12 different types of medicinal herbs. Um, and these herbs I chose because... Number one, they're very hard to get. Uh, when I'm looking for them, I can't really find them. Um, so I know that they're in demand. So I want to take my time and learn how to grow those. Um, I just took a sip of my tea. Um, and another thing, uh, when you're doing herbs, when you're making different concoctions and decoctions um, in your herbal drinks and tonics and everything, uh, if you're just using natural herbs, remember that you like flavor. <laughs> remember, f- flavor is very important. Um, it is nothing. It's nothing wrong with the herb, um, but you do want it to taste like something. Sometimes it just tastes like mucky water. Sometimes it just tastes. It just 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 does not have a good taste. Sometimes, but the the it's not about the taste. It's about the benefits of the herb. And you you know sometimes we have to put our big girl panties on. But it's nothing wrong with making your tea out to be you know delicious and 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 flavorful because you want to drink it you want to be enjoying it you know that you're drinking medicine you're drinking to your health so you definitely want to if you are you know if you do have if you have obtained dry medicinal herbs um that you've purchased online or anything you definitely want to think about the flavor and you can always infuse you can always infuse different things in your herbs to make the, the flavor better you know, you can um, you can put tea bags in it. You could, uh, you know, put um, flavoring like uh, coffee flavoring, different things in it. You know, sugar, honey. You know, different things like that to make your tea taste like something. Because, like I say, you really it's nothing really better than a good good drink cup of good hot cup of tea. You know, throw a cinnamon stick in it. That's what I actually did. Uh, threw a cinnamon stick in it. Tastes, it tastes really good. Let me take a sip. yeah and see it doesn't have a really like powerful flavor it's just like a like a light taste but you know like but the medicine in that like yeah um so like, like I say flavor is very important because you definitely want to enjoy, enjoy your drink buy lots of honey don't try to you know not so much sugar you know try to re- be actively conscious about how much sugar you're putting in your cup just plain point playing period just be actively you know because you're not helping yourself dumping more sugar down your throat you know taking uh filing up your liver and everything so what else uh so yes i have the flowers growing the medicinal herbs they're still little small ones i'm going to post some pictures on my nicole archer facebook page you can uh take a look at them um i'm growing self-heal I'm growing Tulsi, I'm growing Marshmallow, I'm growing Evening Primrose, Purple Echinacea, Broadleaf Thyme, um, Orange Caldenia, Caldenia, something like that, um, but I think those just are the fancy name for Marigolds, um, let's see, Meadowsweet, Skullcap, um, White Sage, uh, I got uh, some kind of another kind of broadleaf thyme, and I have um, yarrow. Some yarrow. <coughs> so I'm going to be working on those uh, herbs. I'm going to find a nice spot for them that is, uh, you know, the kind of environment that they like, the sandy environment where they can just grow and thrive. I want to set them up in a permanent spot. Um, and that is, that's going to be my money. 
because you know making being able to make tinctures and uh, dry herbs and uh, not only that it's people out there who are looking for herbs the same herbs I'm looking for they're looking for so if I could sell you know some of my things on eBay or they reach out to me you know this is this is about building a business you know what I'm saying so I have um, I have created my Facebook page feel good coffees and teas coffees and teas they make you feel good but right now my plan for that was for me to locally offer uh herbal drinks like a little coffee shop that I serve people you know from my home you tell me what's wrong I create your your uh, concoction and you come pick it up and you pay me for that I take cash out real simple and um but I haven't really been advertising because my husband is my priority you know I have some flyers that I have not put out. I don't really advertise my Facebook page because I'm just not in a position where I can spend a lot of time doing my business right now, you know. But once I get all my ducks in a row, I'm going to go back to the drawing board and I'm going to pick this back up and I'm going to start working toward my plan of building feel good coffees and teas. And I just really want to share that with you guys because I'm excited. Um... You have to read, you have to seek knowledge in anything that you choose to do. You have to read. I, I cannot tell you that I don't read because I do. I have to read. I listen to audiobooks, you know, I watch videos, I do my research because I want to know what I'm doing. I use the products, I've been taking care of my husband, I've been taking care of myself with these products so I know exactly what they do I know how to assist you in you know I understand for one I have a medical background so I think that too makes uh makes it easier for me to understand health you have to understand health in order to really understand herbs because the herbs affect the body in different ways and different things need different stimulations to do different things you know People say, uh, you know, like back in the days, they used to do the rice, rest, you know, ice, uh, something and, and elevate, uh, correct, uh, cold and elevate, you know what I'm saying? But I found out that when you're having joint problems and you're moving around and there's just something hurting, your knee hurting, all you have to do is fall back off that joint, uh, any ache, let, let me put it like this. Any ache that you have in your body, if you just fall back off that that ache, relax that ache. Don't utilize it. If if your knees are hurting, don't uh, don't don't walk so much. Take it take it easy. Change up your shoes. You know we cannot continue to wear these made in China shoes. Made in China shoes, nine times out of ten, if they are arch supportive and different types of things like those, those Nike flip flops y'all like to wear. Think about it. Now that you know the China China people don't really like us that much, so for them to make shoes for us, how do we know that we're they're making the shoes? Because there is a such thing called acupuncture. How do we know that the shoes are laid out in a way that's conforming to assist us in having good posture? Those shoes could be our downfall because the bot, it's like the heel drop down. I mean, they, they funny under your feet. You know what I'm saying? They're not going to make the best kind of shoes to support you and make sure you're walking up tall and strong. No. So we have to be conscious of our shoes, our clothes, things tugging and pulling on us. We have to be aware of stuff like that. And your shoes are very important. Like you have to make sure you got good shoes on your feet. You know, you can't do every, you, especially if you're a big woman. If you're a big woman, if you're over 30, you better put some sneakers on your feet. You can't be walking around with no house shoes on all day, every day, running here, there with just house shoes on. Put some shoes on your feet or you're going to have Velcro veins. You're going to have circulation problems later, period. So put some shoes on your feet. You never know when you got to run. I ain't never seen people always go everywhere with flip-flops on and have to run and, and falling all down tripping because they got on darn flip-flops. Well, serves you right because that's just damn stupidity. And we'll be right back after this message.
Hey everybody and welcome back to that Good Herb Talk and this is Miss Nicole coming at you today where we're talking about understanding and utilizing medicinal herbs in your life. Um, I have, I'm excited because South Carolina is considering legalizing cannabis if we get a new mayor, a new uh, guy this year, which would be great. Um, they opened up a huge CBD store. Um, that sells all kind of great CBD oils and stuff. And I'm definitely interested in trying to find some good stuff to help my husband manage his pain. Um, Because when you have bone pain, like bone pain is an internal ache. He's always achy, you know, and it's really bad because he also has neuropathy due to the Velcade injections that he got during his chemotherapy. The Velcade literally fried the nerves in his feet and his toes so he doesn't have really good circulation so what I've been doing is using um alpha lipoic acid I mean not alpha lipoic acid it's al- yeah it's alpha lipoic acid that's what it's called okay so the alpha lipoic acid is basically it repairs the mild sheath that surrounds the nerve and helps the nerve repair itself However, what they do not tell you is that these pills are the size of two peanut M&Ms together. And you got to swallow both of them at the same time. My husband, um, he can't swallow no big ass pill like that. So, me learning and exploring different things, what I ended up doing was the following. So, I took the pills and I got a, uh, I don't know if you guys, if you guys drink, you know what Seagram Vodka is, the blue top. It, we down south, we call it smooth. So I get some smooth and I take these pills and I put five pills in a jar in one of my mason jars and I fill it, you know, halfway with uh, alcohol. It's, uh, I think smooth is like 80% or 90% volume alcohol. You have to have anywhere from like 85 and up to get a really good strong tincture to get a really good strong tincture and to really extract all the the stuff that you need to pull from it so I left it in the jar for about a couple of weeks I shake it up walk by you know shake it up make sure I keep checking on it um and what I noticed is that over a period of time I end up getting this gelatinous thick uh this thick uh syrupy kind of stuff and it's yellow because the pills actually are yellow so um I end up putting it in a a tincture bottle um you know I finished I'm not telling y'all all my secrets I finished you know doing my little thing till once I got done but that's the really the bulk of it but you know you have to get rid of that alcohol flavoring and everything because it is it's alcohol it's liquor you know what I'm saying so if you got somebody who has alcohol problems Um, You can also substitute the, uh, instead of using alcohol, you can use vinegar. And that's uh, really good too. But I didn't want to use vinegar because I like, I really wanted to travel the alcohol. And, um, and I've been giving it to them. I actually, I have, I have like several different size brown bottles with the drip, with the drip system on it. So, um, I filled up a bottle and I gave it to him and he said he felt like he feel like that along with uh, the medicine that he's taking is like a 30 percent. It's like 30 percent better. So I take 30 percent right now. But I do know that we need to I need to make some adjustments. And he guys he once he gets up and start walking, it's going to be better. You know, what I'm saying and he's not taking it three times a day like he may take it two times a day. But even with him taking it two times a day, he's noticing change. And that's what I told him. I said, if I'm giving it to you and you're noticing change, then we need to take it more often so you can get better results, right? Yes. And he's in agreements, and I am too. But that's just some that's just one thing that, you know, research and and me using my own technology. My husband had cancer. My husband is not um is the, he's the first one in his family to ever have cancer. Cancer is not something that runs in his family. And his cancer was di- is, is directly related to other things, which we'll talk about over time. But my husband did not, you know, he wasn't sick. He's never had to take medicine. He's not overweight, none of that. So, and the doctors are not smart. The doctors are not smart. You think that these doctors and these nurses and stuff care about y'all, but they don't. The doctors and nurses don't give a damn about y'all. They don't. They 
they don't give a damn about y'all. What the, the nurses half the time, they don't want to take care of you. They got an attitude. They do the bare minimum. My doctor wrote my husband a prescription. And his prescription clearly calls for him to have 180 pills. Tell me why this girl always calling him in 90 pills and I have to call her and cuss her out. Cause number one, they don't want my husband to take. They don't. They don't want to give you. They don't want to give you no pain pills. If you're a black person, you know one of the hardest things. And I'm just talking real talk. One of the hardest things for you to do as a black person is get some pain medicine. That's not um, tramadone or, or aspirin or uh, um, something, something ibuprofen. You know they don't like giving black people uh, narcotics. And I've worked OBGYN and I've worked general practice and they don't like giving it. Back in the days, I'm telling you, people, women used to get treated with oxycodone for menstrual cramps. I used to have ladies come to the office once a month and pick up a prescription that was already written and signed by the doctor in the envelope for 180 pills for a prescription per month, 180, and it was just for menstrual cramps. My husband has, and due to a motorcycle accident, he has no knee, okay? He got a whole new reconstructed knee, tibia, all that that stuff connected from the knee down, okay? He has pins and needles in his leg. Do you know when we went to the doctor, the doctor was like, he couldn't give him no pain medicine. He said, yeah, Mr. Archer, I see that your knee is bad. I see that your knee's bad because you have an artificial knee. And I see that you have arthritis. And now you're in here because your other knee is giving you some problems. So basically, you don't have any legs to depend on. But I can't give you no pain medicine to make you comfortable. Well, if the pain medicine ain't for somebody that's fucked up like him, who the hell is it for? It certainly isn't for your young teenage daughter to be stealing out the medicine cabinet, going, getting high with her boyfriend, drinking and and partying. It certainly isn't for that. It's supposed to be for the people that's hurting and in pain, right? But see, they don't look at it like that. That's why you have to have alternatives and you have to educate yourself about how to make your body work and how to take care of yourself. You cannot depend on these folks to understand who you are and what you need to survive. You cannot depend on these folks to tell you the truth about your diet, how you're supposed to be living your lifestyle. We are not all the damn same. Genetically, physically, mentally, spiritually, we are not the same. Everyone has different needs. We cannot eat the same thing that these people eat and continue on living and thinking that we're going to strive and be excellent because we're just not. It's impossible. You know, eventually you're going to have to plant some food. You're going to have to learn how to grow food to feed yourself and I advise you to to move you be transitioning yourself into that position right now if possible and if it's not possible for you to have a garden then you find somebody who has a garden and you offer to help them with their garden you offer to help them you offer to contribute to their garden and in response to the offer to give them some money to give you food from their garden that's how you get fresh food and vegetables. I, just, I got so many damn hot peppers in my yard. I don't know what to do. So you know what I did? I posted them on Facebook. I said, they're going to be ready in a little bit. Put your orders in. Now, $3, I'm going to give you a whole chunk of a bush. And they full of peppers. You understand? Because I ain't going to eat all them damn peppers. And I don't have my food processor yet. But when I do get my food processor, child, I'm making me some, um, I'm going to make some hot sauce. Make some hot sauce and some other little things I'ma make. Yes, I am. And if I stay close, and if you stay close by to me, or if we 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 sisters and you come over or whatever, or you, I'll send you some. I'll send you some. You know what I'm saying? But we have to get into the, this this mode that we gonna have to really start thinking about taking care of ourselves. You know, I the, the healthcare system is. I've been in the healthcare system. I used to work there. And and things have changed so much. It was already bad because the generation that was coming up behind me really just didn't give a damn. No, I, I, you, you don't have, they don't have no pride in their work. Nurses don't have no pride in their work. Nurses, you know, they, they feel like you a problem. If you interrupting them, you a problem, you know, and, 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 and nursing, your, our mother is our nurse. Our mother is our nurse. If we don't feel good, we should be able to go to our mama with any problem, and she should be able to make us feel good. You know? Because that's what what we're supposed to do. 
We have to learn how to take care of ourselves. We have to learn how to pass knowledge, wisdom, and understanding on to our kids. So when they start feeling bad, they don't wait till the coronavirus done got so so bad on them that they practically about to die. They 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 pick up on symptoms and issues quick, and they get on those symptoms quick and start taking care of themselves. But see, we don't know that because we don't even know how to take care of ourselves. We don't even know that. We got life-saving medicine growing out, growing in our front yard. We don't even have none of it in our house. We don't even have a medicine cabinet. Our medicine cabinet don't even have a don't even have no medicine in it. We don't even understand that if our baby colicky at night, it's, 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 if your baby gassy, it, you don't even have to do a lot. If your kids, if it's hard to settle down your kids at night, you can make them some tea and they'll calm right down. See, things like that we don't know because we don't take the time because we all worrying about the wrong damn thing. We have to get back to our back to our roots. And the good herb talk for me, this good herb talk uh, uh, section in my in my podcast is good because it, it reminds you to take care of yourself. Learn how to be self-sufficient in your health, in your thinking, in your finances. Learn how to be self-sufficient. Because money has no value when it's not spent. Money in your pocket does not do anything. It's what you do with the money and how you use it to progress your family forward is what makes the money so big. Money is just paper until it is used to purchase things. We get those things to purchase that we need so we can live better. Who don't want to live good? Please tell me who don't want to live good. Who don't want to? Who don't want to have a good family and a good husband and and good kids and laughter and all that? Who don't want that? If you don't want that, I don't know what's wrong with you. I want barbecues. I want girlfriends with husbands and kids who can come to my house and we can laugh and talk and you know I can trust you around your husband. You can trust me around your husband. Cause the main thing is we all going home to our own homes. And when we do get together, we the, the, the ladies, we talking about what can we do to do some make some money and have a business? How can we help one another? You sisters need anything? You need my assistance? You need me to come and help fill, fulfill some orders for you? I don't expect to get paid for things like that all the time. I don't. I don't. You know? But I, I, but I tell you, we forget. We forget that it takes sisterhood and brotherhood to make a nation work. It takes sisterhood and brotherhood and it takes us stepping out of our comfort zone and learning new skills. You know, I know, child, I know y'all sitting on here right now like she don't know what she's talking about. What she know about some herbs? She don't know about, oh, she just, she heard about Dr. Savy. She she don't know nothing. Let me tell you something. Yes, I've heard about Dr. Savy. I know about Patrick on, on, on YouTube. I know about uh, Paul. I know about, I, I, don't, I don't know too many women. It is, um, you know, and I purchased some books. I read, I read the audio books. I purchased the hardcover books. You know, I have references, encyclopedias. I buy different things to educate myself because I don't, there are so many different herbs. They do so many different things, but you have to have a basic knowledge and understanding of the human body in order to make any of this work. You have to understand how muscles work. You have to understand how your heart works. You have to understand circulation. You have to understand, have a basic common understanding of certain things to make things work. And that's in any any aspect. And things that you don't know, don't be afraid to ask. Because there's always somebody out there that's willing to teach you if you ask. You know? Teachers like to teach. Teachers like to teach. I'm a teacher. That's why I have a podcast. Because I like to talk. I probably need to spend more time on here. You know what I'm saying? But... I told you, I haven't really been able to sit down and tell you that I, when I sit down and tell a story, I'm just going to put it all on YouTube, you know what I'm saying? Because like I said, just so much, you know, so much. So, um, yes, so we have to put a bug on my hand. Sitting outside on the porch and a bug on me, you know, that done blew my, blew my darn, my moment. But uh, we have to, you know, definitely be aware that 
this place is not set up based on your genetics and your chemistry you have a different type of vibe about your body you know dr sabi said that we are alkaline that we have to uh, maintain an alkaline state an alkaline state our body our ph needs to stay at a, at a neutral state and i'm gonna tell you why that was important and why i had to keep that in mind <coughs> excuse me i had to keep that in mind during the time my husband was uh receiving his velcade injections velcade is in strict in acidic medication that you know is supposed to stop the multiple myeloma bone cancer from multiplying and you know i it, i guess it helped but the main thing that it do is it gives you peripheral neuropathy in your hands you have tingling in the hands and you have tingling in the feet because it, it kills your nerve cells so my husband has been like suffering with that it's like really bad you know he he it's just he's just always uncomfortable you know and even with he takes lyrica now even with the lyrica the lyrica is good we do need the dosage increase i think but you know it's taken us two months just to get the dosage increase i've had to increase i had to call in a refill on the same thing that don't really work because my nurses are just they suck <laughs> they suck and I'm, I'm gonna tell you about these heifers when we come right back Hey everybody and welcome back to SCDC ENT presents the age woman and I am that age woman Miss Nicole coming at you today talking to you about that good herb talk um, you know if you've heard good herb talk before I'm just explaining my journey with uh, my discovery of using and applying medicinal herbs and how I plan to turn that into a business if possible but if I not able to turn it into but I'm gonna turn it into a business because that's just what I do, you know? Then yet y'all don't know about me is I definitely am an entrepreneur. Like, I am an entrepreneur, just that I ain't got no damn money to really make the things happen. You can have, it's, it's hard to try to start a business and you really don't have the money to chase that goal like you want. See, I have a job that I work. I work from home, literally, at a computer. But I don't make a lot of hours because my I have to take care of my husband. Like, I don't know what it takes to make your house work. And, you know, I can tell you what it takes to make my house work. I can give these folks four, I can give these folks four to five hours out of my day for their foolishness with this job. That's, that's all I can do. So I work four days a week, four days a week, about four to five hours a day. That's it. And I work from 11 or say 12 o'clock to four o'clock. And that's it. See, I, I, I know what you're saying. Oh, girl, that's why you can't get no business started. I don't give a damn. I'm not chasing no damn job. And I'm not about to be stressed out by these motherfuckers stressing me out. I'm not doing it. And luckily, when I met my husband, he owned his own house. He, got a, he had a car for me to drive, and he got another car for me to drive. So, child, I ain't really wanting for nothing not to work hard any damn way. I just work to keep keep a little something going in the house. And that's so damn blessing and refreshing because I'm too, child, I'm in my 40s. I ain't trying to be out here working hard, chasing y'all. I'm not chasing the American dream. I'm just trying to carve out something and have a good life. Period, point blank. Nothing else. I'm not out here. I don't give a damn about my hair, my outfits. Child, you should see what I got on right now. A dashi, a pink dashi with my fringes to the bottom and some tights and my purple jelly shoes that done put all kind of tic-tac-toe signs on my foot. I don't be kidding. I wear my natural hair, <clears throat> my natural skin, and my natural attitude, and all that's good. My man, I'm, I'm only checking for one. Well, I check for two. I check for the most high, and I check for my husband. You know what I'm saying? And he know it's going to get greater later. I ain't no need for me walking around here trying to be my most beautifulest nails and all that day. He feeling like shit. He going to be like, bitch, where you going? I'm like, I ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? I'm just chilling around the house. So I'm not trying to put on no show. I'm not, I, 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 like I said, we all have our different things that make us happy in life. In my life, I, I'm, I don't want a lot, y'all. I'm not chasing nothing. 
I just want I just want to be happy with my husband. I want I want us to eat good, live good, and, and just do the damn thing. Worship, keep the commandments, raise up our family real good. That's it. You know, that's that's what my plan is. And if I could have make a couple of businesses, make some money and get real rich doing all that, look I'm good with that too. But I know that that come in time and that's order and that's that's like a it's you can't serve no wine before it's time. You gotta lay the foundation in order for you to be able to handle big things like that. You know? Cause it's one thing for you to get a bag and, and have all this money, but you ain't doing nothing with it. These these rappers and actors and everything, they got all this money, but they don't do nothing. They don't do absolutely nothing. They just holding on to it. It ain't worth nothing having a whole bunch of zeros behind your name, but you you won't do nothing with it. You're not investing, you're not trying to make anything out of nothing. You just rich. Got all these clothes. What the hell you gonna do with them clothes? You know what they gonna do with them clothes? They gonna sell them clothes to somebody else when you die. And that's gonna be the end of you. Somebody just gonna remember you for all them clothes. These celebrities, I don't even understand why we entertain them. I don't I really don't. I don't understand why we entertain them. It's only a few people that I think generally have our best interests at heart. And I'm going to do a a, a podcast about the best and worst YouTubers. Because I I, I don't watch TV. I do watch YouTube. I'm guilty. And I watch a different collection of shows and everything. And I think that some people just don't mean us no good as a people. You know? Some people just don't. They just don't mean us no good as a people. And we are so stupid. We just, we know, we, we, we overlook coonism. And, and all kind of negative behavior that we know is just disgusting. And we'll entertain shit just so we can stay in a fucked up state of mind. We'll entertain stuff that we know is just straight bogus from the beginning. And we'll just do it just because we want to be accepted. Totally unacceptable. I just, we have got to raise the bar. And people who can't meet up to the bar, we need not entertain them. Because they are hindering our progress as a people. There are, we are, there we are not all niggas you understand we just not we not all niggas some of us have some class about ourselves some of us know how to live and those of us that know how to live we need to stop allowing people who clearly are or are operating on a lower frequency than we are we need to quit entertaining their thoughts and letting them speak for us the people that speak the way that we want them to speak that speaks justice that speaks the truth about uh, that speaks our truth that's who we need to get behind and support you know we need to begin to show more that we're about that life instead of talking about it you know if if the if the reason why people treat you a certain type of way is because of how you dress then change how you dress you understand because when people see that you care about yourself, they're not going to try you all kind of ways. Because they like, whoa, oh, okay, this, yeah, okay, so that's, you're not one of those. No, I'm not one of those. No, yeah, yeah, you can get this. Yeah, no, I'm not one of those. They treat you different. Because, see, they're not ready for that. They're ready for the joke. And if you always present yourself as the joke, and, and the joke is not so much as who can yell the loudest. The joke, that the joke is, is the person that's yelling the loudest and acting the stupidest. Because at the end of the day, what? You know? <sighs> but I digress. Back to the good herb talk. You know? I'm using these medicinal herbs to make my life better. And I suggest that you do the same. I think that it's very easy to start a little medicinal herb cabinet. The first things that you should pick up from the grocery store, they have an awesome section of uh, Hispanic collections of foods. Um, You can make some awesome healing oil with arnica flowers. They actually sell them, um, you know, right where the little packs of uh, like those big long peppers be at in the grocery store. It's always a a Hispanic uh, food section and they always have those long peppers, but they got different herbs in those bags cloves you ladies who suffer with uh you ladies who suffer with anemia you can get you some of those star anise right there in that section they got them in walmart you can get some star anise you can get some whole cloves um you can get some thyme 
probably can get some bay leaves. You pick up you some um you pick up you some parsley. Part let me tell y'all, parsley is a very good tea that you that you can drink and really cleans your body out and purifies your, your body a lot. Parsley, parsley tea. You know, and you just parsley tea is just putting the damn parsley in the pot and balling it. That's it. So don't try to make it all difficult. Put the damn parsley in the pot. Throw some of them herbs and yeast. Put you a couple of good tea bags in the damn pot and ball it. That's what you do. And drink the damn water off the stuff. Okay? So that's what we that's what I'm talking about. For anybody that's gonna be difficult and simple, put the shit in the pot and ball it, alright? Make the tea and drink it. And you will notice things like I've noticed like since I've been drinking my coffee on the regularly, I notice my nails are growing because I drink a lot of nettles. And the nettles help your hair and nails grow. They're very nutritive. They give you a lot of vitamin A, vitamin B, vitamin C. You don't even realize you need these things. You don't even realize that you're that you're not getting them. You know, so it is a wonderful thing to be drinking like some flowers and stuff from the earth. You know, uh, some cinnamon sticks. Grab some cinnamon sticks while you're in that area. You should have keep your glass jars. I told you this girl, these these ladies before. Buy things that's in glass jars. Keep your herbs in the glass jars. Um, tea bags. <coughs> you definitely want to get you some good tea bags. Like I say, <coughs> they have tons of um, different kinds of tea flavors in the grocery store. Pick you up something. Read the tea. If you feeling congestion, find something for sinuses. If you're having a hard time sleeping, there's some tea in there that's talking to you that you need to try. And it, and it works. You know what I'm saying? It works. Um, instead of regular, if you're trying to get away from sugar, agave server, syrup is really good. I know this sounds crazy, but maple syrup is really good. And you can use, or you can use honey. Or you can use sweetened monk fruit. That, a monk fruit sweetener. Those are, those are natural things that you can use. Agave is really good, too. Um, I thought I said that. I, I have some agave, and I use that um, in our teas and everything um something else that we've been doing that has been that that has helped my husband not receive that helped him not receive uh a blood transfusion when we were going through the kid the process of the chemo it totally wipes your body out everything um and some people have to have a blood transfusion now my husband did have to receive platelets but he did not have to uh, get blood because his hemoglobin never went lower than a 12. I mean, no, I'm sorry. It never went lower than a 10. Never went lower than a 10. I'm going to tell you why. Because I gave him CMOS every day. Well, the whole time when he was going through the process, when we drink, we switch up between coffees and teas. And I was giving him, uh, adding CMOS to his coffee every day. And because of the sea moss, it actually kept his hemoglobin levels up high enough to help him help him bounce back and build back up. I'm sorry. Y'all know I live down south and everybody love these loud ass trucks. I don't know, you know, I don't understand, but I'm sorry about that. But um but the heat the sea moss is what helped him. Just put a little, I get the, the dry, the powder for him. I put it in his, in his coffee, stir it up, sweeten it, and he did really good. And it's, and it's I mean, his elect, we had a lot of issues with his electrolytes, keeping his electrolytes balanced. One was too high, this was too low, this, 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 this. I started that. I mean, his electrolytes have bounced back up. Everything is in the green, like it's just shooting up. You know, when I read his, uh, when I read his labs reports, and then that's another thing too. Like I know how to read labs and all like that stuff. So you can't they 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 don't yeah. So when you read when I read in his labs, I can see, you know, the things that he need and how his body is holding up elect electrically, you know, because you still need those you still need those lab tests. So you still need to go to the doctor and find out what is what is going on. But the problem is the plan that the doctor has for you, there is no there is no plan to make you whole. There is just a plan to medicate you. They did not have a plan to make my husband whole. They just have a plan to medicate him. They don't want to fix his feet. They just want to medicate him so he's not complaining about it. I want to fix his feet. You understand? That That's the difference. 
when we looking at how we can take care of ourselves, they're just trying to give you a pill or a temporary fix. You got to change things in order to get things to 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 move in the direction that you want them to move in. You know? And you have to take care of the person. See, the doctors take care of the illness. The doctors do not address him. They have a respect for him because he is a person going through this, but they don't understand what how he's going to feel emotionally and, and different things. They don't they're not in because that's not their concern. Their concern is addressing the disease that is affecting you. But the side effects and all the other things that come along with the medicines and things that they pre- they prescribe for you and the things that they want you to do, like they're not really worried about those things. That's your problem. <laughs> when you're shitting on yourself because your bladder fucked up and when you done lost all the feelings in your fingers and when you, when you, when you, when you can't eat nothing, you're throwing up because of a pill that they provided for you, it's a whole nother story at that time. It's a whole nother story at that time. They don't know what to do. They sent my husband home, y'all. I'm going to tell y'all this story right, right when we come back after this message. <coughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back. And today, we're talking that good herb talk. And I am that lady, Miss Nicole, talking to you today. And what I wanted to talk to you today about what I was going to finish up saying from uh, just the previous episode was that how um, the nurses, the nurses, the nurses uh, that call themselves taking care of my my, uh, husband is just haven't been too much of a desirable thing. I haven't been too much of a desirable thing. Um, I haven't, you know, I'm not impressed, you know, at all. You know, when it comes down to, you have to, you have to take it when, when people are going through something, when people going through something, whether they tell you that they want you there for them or not, they want you there. Whether they tell you they want you there or not, they want you there. Because nobody should have to go through, and it's people who go through stem cell transplants and things like that by themselves, you know, but nobody really tells these people, like, the pain that you're going to go through, the suffering, how you're not going to feel like this, and you're going to, you need help, you know, and for you to have family around you that watch you go through things like that and not even think to come and be there for you, it's really sad. It's like, you must have really did something bad to piss everybody off that they don't want to fuck with you like that, that they'll let you go through this really painful time alone without any help. You know, I know that I was sent here to help him through this. I know I was. Because when I think about how me and him met and everything, I already knew God sent me to him. You know, but I never knew that my, my, that I would be tested the way that I have, just dropped in me, just all of a sudden today, hey, your husband got cancer, and how you find out? Because we sent a piece of paper home, and it said uh, multiple myeloma leukemia, you know. I'm like, what the fuck is this? What is this talking about, multiple myeloma? Come to find out, that's what's wrong with him. And I'm like, the doctor never even came and told me that. The doctor didn't say anything. They never even call you. They don't say anything. My husband, he don't even know what's going on. He's just in the hospital, you know. I told you it went from a, it went from my back curtain to a slip in the bathroom when he was getting up off the toilet. I guess he was weak and lost his balance and fell, fell uh, between the toilet and the tub. And and I told him to stay in bed. I told him not to get up out the bed that night. He fell. He laid in the bed for a month with three broke bones in his back. Three. Uh, his vertebra, he crushed them. And not only did he crush them when he fell, he literally lost inches in height. <laughs> My husband was 6'3", and now he is 5'10". <laughs> so this totally devastated him, of course. Devastated me, of course. 
you know he had to have metal um, he got concrete in his bones filled in his spine to strengthen it so he always gonna have a level of pain to a certain extent his bones is full of holes because he has because he was already small frame so he has like osteoporosis like an old woman So as you can see, I don't have time for a lot of bullshit with a lot of people at all. Because my number one goal is to get this man back up and running to the best of his ability. You know? And this cancer shit has just ravaged him and 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 he and you know what? I and mean, you know why I'm so blessed to even have the opportunity to even do anything for him. I'm blessed to be in this position to be able to assist him because I watch him go through hell what I would think is just like and he don't even complain I watched him take two 18 gauge needles one 18 gauge needle in each arm for hours hours so they could collect enough stem cells to be able to do the transplant and he did it in one sitting He is, he's, my, he's not a, he's not a saint. He's not a saint. He's, but he, he's not, he's not no bad person. Yeah, I don't, I don't think that he deserved cancer. But you know, it's not what I think or what, it's not even about what he deserved. It's just judgment. And we just deal with judgment. You know? But, you know, we deal with judgment. And, but he, he don't complain. You know, he, he know what he got to do. He have a, he, he try to control his attitude, but he, it's already, he, he got a, you got an indefinite past with me, nigga, with attitudes. You got an indefinite past because you got the right to have an attitude. You got the right to have an attitude. You got the right to be upset. You got the right to say whatever you want to say. And, and that's fine. And that don't change nothing. I still love you. I know you just speaking because you upset. Uh, that don't matter to me. I ain't going nowhere. That's 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 what your man want from you. That's the attitude he wants you to have with him. Like I done invested too much time with you. I know we going through something right now. It's not personal. It ain't about whether you love me or not. It's the fact that I'm here. I'm not looking for love. I. I, I got love. Love ain't gonna help us get through this. Us being together and and, and staying on point and being and respecting one another is gonna do that. Cause we can't always think about each other feelings when we going through shit. Cause it ain't about. It's just not about feelings, y'all. <laughs> it ain't about feelings. Don't nobody care about how you feel. And as soon as you just get out your feelings, you're gonna be wonderful. And we'll be right back. After.